When you look at a, a, a junior game, mm. kids, say they're 16, 17, when would you put a line through a kid? What would make you say, no, we're not going, we're not going to go any show any further interest in him? Um, we don't like laziness. Yeah. Um, we can see... You can see lazy easy. You can see work ethic easy. Well, the kids have got work ethic. Um, you know they're going to make it. So that's more they important th than being able to kick on both sides? Oh, you can, you can get better at that. OK. Pace? Pace? Yeah, marginally get better than that. Not a big issue. So it's the I work mean, ethic? You have a look at the game. Though. Whether it was slow, fast... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...skillful, not skillful. Yeah. There's a place for everyone. Um, I, I like to see influence. Mm. And sometimes influence is a bit more subtle. I really liked, um, in, in particular, so let Rory Sloan. Yep. Uh, you know, we was playing under 18s and his kick was a bit wobbly, and but every time he touched the ball, something good happened and he didn't uh -huh. touch it. He wasn't massive, but... And he's still doing the same thing at AFL level. Yeah, yeah. Um, still looks... Kicks the same and can do a wobbly one, but influence on game, huge. And but I always try to look for influence. Who's the one? Who's the, the kid that you take most pride in, that you saw him, you identified him? Well, you're probably looking at Paddy Dangerfield, first pick in the draft for me back in my first draft. When you... Yeah, ahead, <clears> of, <throat> ahead of an Ebert, who uh, are royalty in Adelaide, aren't they? Yes. And, uh, look, and, and Paddy played mainly in defence in his whole year, but we requested... Um, him to play in the midfield in a game that I knew no one would be at, and I didn't even <laughs> go to the game. I got Hamish to go, and Hamish said you ought to see the first half. Anyway, then the following week was uh, um, the last game of the year, and everyone was at other games, and they had him in the midfield the whole game. Oh, he had a good 29 that day, mm -hmm. I think it was. And then I thought, oh well, cat's out of the bag here. He's going to be in. They playing in the first final, and they'll, he'll be in the midfield and kill it, and everyone will be watching. And <laughs> They put him back in defence and they lost and he was out. I've gone, oh, happy days. Mm. Uh, Where would you take him in? That was a little... 10? 10, yeah. yeah. That was a little bit of a plan at the end of the year because we were watching the whole year because that AIS group went to Perth and then to South Africa and they played this game in Perth and they played against, I think it was West Perth and um, Troy Cook was playing for... A little tough nut, playing for West Perth. Well, you know... Virtually every kid there shit themselves <laughs> on the ground as Cookie was trying to kill them all, <laughs> except for two blokes, Paddy Dangerfield yeah. and Daniel Rich. Mm -hmm. And I've gone, I've gone, keep your, I said, keep your eye on this bloke for the whole year, and and that's when you you could take them when they were, you know, they're born before the thirtieth of yep. January. But I'd probably take more pride in someone like in that first year, someone like Ed Kerno. So we took him as a rookie. I said to Craigie, I said. I've got your tagger to replace Robert Shirley. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he goes, oh, I'm not going to play taggers. I said, what do you think Robert Shirley's been doing? I said, this bloke will replace him. So they virtually wiped him. Glenelg wiped him, had him in the twos. He goes back to uh, Melbourne, plays VFL, kills it there, gets picked up by Carl, and he's played nearly 200. Mm. And played well, finished second in the best in Ferris last year. That's the ones... That's the ones I love. Yeah. And the Rory Lairds and the one that got away, Lockie Neal. I was going to ask, uh, the one that you missed. Uh, we all missed, still, but... Yeah. Um, so were you close to, to taking him? No, well, I'll tell you exactly what happened. He had 40 in the grand final and, uh, and Alan... And the, they lost. And he was outstanding. And uh, I thought, let's see if Alan Stewart picks him to win his medal because not often the losers get the medal, but he picked him to win Did the he? medal. Yeah. Anyway... I could not get anyone in my group that liked Lockie Neal. You I, did? Or were no, you, I couldn't get anyone. No, I said, were you, were you yeah, convinced? Yeah, I, I would have taken him at the back end. We interviewed him, great kid, all that sort of stuff. And and uh, I'm going to blame myself here that I didn't do enough homework on speaking to him about who interviewed him. Um, you know, because most of the kids want to stay home. Mm. So I should have followed up a bit more, but I thought I'll, I'm going to take him as my first pick in the rookie draft. A bloody free, I took him at pick, what was it, 68 or something like that? 69, I, oh, I wasn't happy. So the next year, same thing, Rory Laird. And this time I did a bit more homework and I knew that he wasn't going anywhere and I took him first. I, well, I took him in the rookie draft, I knew I'd spoke to him and he's turned out all right. So I should have trusted, but 
judgment more. Now, I should have done a little bit more homework on that one as well.